Hello viewers, welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking networking, home networking. Um, I just got done doing the rough end, and so I figured I'd show you what I did and what the plans were for, for our house. Um, so this one's fun for me since it's more uh, kind of up my alley for what I normally do. Um, so this is in the mechanical room of the house. You, know, you guys have seen that before, right? And this is where the network rack is going to be. So I have brought all of the various uh, network drops into this room. And uh, I guess I'll take you through them. Uh, so first off, the cable. That is Cat6. Um, now, as soon as I say Cat6, inevitably, I imagine there would be someone thinking, Dude, why did you not use Cat 6A? Why didn't you use Cat 7, Cat 8, Cat 12,002? The reality is I don't need it. Uh, one, it's expensive. Um, so Cat 7 and Cat 8, like those are not even, like those are barely standards, if anything, and way overkill, right, for what I'm doing. Cat 6A. The only reason I would need Cat 6A is if I had a run longer than, what is it, uh, 150. 100 meters, 120 feet, somewhere around there, okay? I, I think it's 100 meters. I could be mistaken. Regardless, I'll let you Google that and look up the specs. The reason you use CAT 6A is if you want to future-proof yourself against 10 gigabit Ethernet on long distances, right? Up to, it may be up to 300 meters or up to 100 meters. I can't remember the numbers on what the standards are. Regardless, for this house, I don't have runs that long. My longest run is within the specs for Cat 6 to operate at, at uh, 10 gigabit. And that was what I was targeting is uh, I want to be able to run a 10 gigabit LAN over copper if I need to. Um, initially, I'm not going to because 10 gig switches and stuff are expensive and I don't need it. Uh, so putting in one gig switches, but should the need arise, really as internet speeds increase, right? I'll be able to upgrade, upgrade to 10 gig. And if I need faster than 10 gig, I, I don't know. We'll cross that bridge in 50 years or 30 years. I don't know. So Cat6 is what I ran uh, when you're shopping for this stuff. So that's what I would recommend is Cat6. I think it's it's the best balance. Unless you're, unless you're building a massive house with very long runs and you are super concerned about getting every ounce of performance, uh, cat six is perfectly fine. So the thing you don't want to cheap out on though is copper. You go on Amazon, you will find cat six, you know, a thousand foot spools for super cheap and it's super cheap because it is not copper. It is copper clad aluminum. You do not want copper clad aluminum. It's nothing but pain and suffering. Get copper, pay for real copper. Thank yourself later. So you want 100% copper and you want solid conductors for the stuff in the walls, not stranded. The stranded is the stuff that you find in patch cables, which what makes it all flimsy and able, able to be coiled up and bent and everything like that. For the stuff in the walls, you want a solid conductor. I think this stuff is 23 gauge. Um, I think they might actually even sell some Cat 6 at 24 gauge. But So get, get the 23 gauge, get the biggest you can find and get solid copper and get a solid conductor, not stranded. Um, I went with a brand called True Cable uh, off of Amazon. Uh, oh, the boxes are over here. Let's take a walk. Here's what I used. True Cable. Uh, I, is it good? I don't know. It got good reviews. I liked it well enough. Uh, it pulled nicely. Obviously, I haven't hooked it up, so I really can't tell you, but uh, we'll see, won't we? Um, so I used that until I ran out and then I tried to get more, but, uh, material shortages, I couldn't find it in blue and I'm not about to mix colors. I'll go to the colors in a minute. So I had to get monoprice, uh, cable to fill in the rest and monoprice makes good stuff. So I, I'm not too concerned about that. And the, the shade of blue matches close enough to the rest of the blue to where I'm not concerned. So blue, we're talking colors. I've got color coded because as I mentioned in previous videos, I am a nerd. So all of the blue is data, just your normal ethernet jacks to get internet, network access, whatever. 
okay? So these are drops for the entire house. There's a lot of them, uh, probably around 48 or so, because that's how big of a switch I got. Um, and then here, for these other colors, all right, we got orange and purple. Orange is general uh, PoE, power over ethernet. So that is for access, uh, wireless access points. That is for uh, a couple drops behind TVs um, for uh, some future plans. And then, uh, yeah, I guess really that's about it. Oh, ring doorbell is around PoE. And then uh, the ring alarm system that we're gonna be using, I'm gonna power the base station via PoE to make it a cleaner install. And I'm sure I'll do a video on that when I get to it. Um, the purple is security. So uh, going with Ubiquiti equipment, um, planning on using Ubiquiti security cameras. And Ubiquiti has a very nice tool on their website. I think it's design.ui.com where you can upload your plans and you can uh, basically design all your entire network infrastructure. So upload your plans and then you, you are able to set some scaling to where Ubiquiti knows what scale your plans are at. So it knows, you know, okay, 10 feet is 10 feet, that kind of thing. And then you can overlay different types of walls along your walls. So Ubiquity gives you options to say, this is a normal like, drywall wall, this is brick, this is stone, wood, whatever. Once you do all that, then you can take a list of their access points, drop them in your house wherever you want, and it will show you how the Wi-Fi signal propagates, both 2.4 gig and uh, 5 gigahertz uh, spectrums, which is really cool for optimizing Wi-Fi placement. So I did exactly that and then placed my access points accordingly in the house to get maximum efficiency for Wi-Fi coverage. And I probably went overkill because I, I wired up for six access points, um, five initially, and then one as a, as a future expansion. And that will basically blanket this house with five gigahertz Wi-Fi and is incredibly overkill for 2.4 gigahertz. So we should be good there. They also allow you to configure security cameras. So what I did with that was I basically dropped uh, security cameras all around the property and allowed me to show their uh, kind of uh, fields of fire, right? Their angle to where I could see where everything overlapped in the cone of visibility going out from the camera. So I was able to get the magic number of, okay, here's the cameras that I need to place and here's the number around the perimeter such that I have full coverage. And so I believe that magic number was 11, including the ring doorbell. And so that's what you see with all the purple cables. And those will be running PoE, you know, as well. Uh, I just color coded it for security. Uh, the reason I chose these colors, I, I couldn't find a real good standard of like for ethernet cables. I think it's pretty much kind of whatever you want to do. Uh, blue seemed reasonably consistent for just general data. Purple seemed to be a sort of convention for security. And orange, uh, I chose orange for PoE, honestly, because uh, orange, uh, power, uh, hot, right? Uh, just to let you know that, hey, maybe you shouldn't blindly cut into this cable. Otherwise, sparks will happen. Ask me how I know. Uh, I guess the other thing I ran was the one piece of coax in this entire house. Um, we didn't run anything for, you know, coax for cable boxes or anything. Uh, it's We live in the future now and everything's streaming and we haven't had cable for a very long time. So this is for uh, rabbit ears up in the attic for um, HD uh, TV over the air, HD TV. So that's ran up there too. And that'll hook in here to a uh, network, uh, Amazon Fire TV uh, network DVR. Okay, so uh, I can kind of walk the, the house and kind of show you what I did. Uh, incidentally, to try to make the install cleaner, you know, I used uh, Velcro straps right there, right? To bundle the cables. Uh, those black tubes, that's just four inch PVC pipe that I cut and um, painted black with uh, four inch stainless uh, pipe clamps. Those are ODs. They're kind of pricey, but I want it to look halfway decent since it's going to be exposed. Um, and with the drop ceiling in here, I think it'll provide a nice termination and it'll look pretty. Um, so you can see there I've got them up, running up and over and kind of fanning out and going to the house. Um, I ran all of the network cable kind of in between the first and second floor and then just stubbed up to the second floor. That seemed to be the easiest to kind of run everything in one big bundle and then peel off. So as you can see, similar to everything else, right? Just ran a bundle and then Velcro tied it together. Um, all right, and so, you can see some lines peel off there. 
and uh, you know, just kind of winding their way. The bulk of these cables go to the office. I ran a lot of drops there. So um, I'll just do a quick show of kind of representative sample of what I did in pretty much each room. So I'm in a bedroom here. I ran two drops um, pretty much to each location. So two drops behind a TV here. <clears throat> and you'll notice, here's a, here's a pro tip. I bought uh, 2,000 feet to start of the blue, so two pull boxes, which means I could pull two lines at a time, which saved a lot of time, all right? Keeping them straight, I took uh, just some red electrical tape, just some identifier, right? And I wrapped one side of the tape. And then on my pull box, you may have noticed this, if you, if you rewind and look at those pull boxes, you'll notice one of them had a stripe of red tape on it. So I basically tagged everything to know that, okay, this is kind of, you know, the, this was from the red box. So when I get to the end of the run, I know which cable came from where when I actually, you know, cut it out, cut it off out of the pull box and label everything. Did I mention labeling everything? Label everything, yeah? Label everything. Because you saw that whole bundle of cables. If that wasn't labeled, that'd be a nightmare to try to sort out because all of these are home runs, right? So as, as important as it is for electrical, it's even more important for network to try to make sure you know where all this stuff goes. So this will loop behind the TV. And once drywall's done, it'll a, a, a recess box will get cut in, right? And this will get pulled through. And then, you know, like we showed earlier, the power will get pulled through um, for a recessed outlet. Uh, most of the other rooms have uh, like a desk drop for a, for a computer or whatever. So just your standard low voltage box and a pair of wires coming out. Um, similar thing in the living room, All right? So we're gonna have the TV above the fireplace. So tip cables running down around the fireplace and uh, right. Two Ethernet drops, got the one PoE, and then uh, and then power for the uh, you know for the television, right? Um, the office showed you I did kind of some overkill. I ran eight drops here, basically just in the corners. So two, 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 because I'm gonna have a lot of stuff in here because <clears throat> that's what I do for a living, <laughs> pretty much software. So I. Lots of gear in here. Um, what else can I show you? Oh, access point. So here is how I ran the access points. See a single PoE line? Going to just a normal ceiling box. Um, for the Ubiquiti access points I'm using, they are really designed to be cut into drywall. Um, so they don't have a good like rough end mounting bracket or anything like that. So uh, I didn't want to do that. I wanted the drywallers to cut holes for me because I'm lazy. So what I did was I took the ubiquity brackets from the access points and me and my dad spent some time in the garage with a drill press and we fabbed up, <clears throat> uh, I guess a bracket. I not only fabbed up, we, we drilled additional holes into the ubiquity bracket to provide an adapter so we can basically drill or fasten that bracket directly into this uh, normal uh, four inch right, ceiling box. And then we can attach the uh, access point to the bracket. So that allows us to set all the access point locations at the rough end time before drywall, making sure we like the positioning and then have the drywallers cut our holes. Pray they don't nick our cable and, uh, and go from there. Uh, incidentally, leave yourself some slack on this kind of stuff so that if the drywallers you know, nick your cable, you can basically pull, pull a little more through, cut off the bad section, and you should be good. So uh, we'll see how that works out. So, for networking, I think that's about it for, for the rough end. Um, definitely have future videos on this uh, as we go along. Uh, here's some more network drops for the built-in desks for the computers for the kids that we're going to have. Just ran two, you know, two pairs. All right. <clears throat> and uh, I guess one thing I'd also... Oh, also ran... Ethernet for our thermostat, right? Because uh, I found out my thermostat for my HVAC I'm getting has an Ethernet port on it. So yeah, it's got Wi-Fi, but if I can hardwire it, I want to. <clears throat> that is, I, when you're designing your system, have that in mind. If the device doesn't move, 
and can accept an Ethernet connection, you should hardwire it. Because uh, Wi-Fi is great. Wi-Fi is awesome. A wire is better. And as far as I'm concerned, a wire or a piece of fiber, right? A hard line will always be better than Wi-Fi. Now, I, now technolo you know, technology could prove me wrong eventually, right? I mean, we all know Bill Gates is famous. You know, who needs more than, what, 640K of memory? But at least right now and in the foreseeable future, a hard line will always be faster than Wi-Fi. <clears throat> so I would recommend wiring everything you can. Cable is cheap, relatively, and it's easy to run now versus later. So run more than you think you need. Run an extra one and then run another one. And even if even if your network infrastructure can't support it initially, you know, you may say, man, I want to wire all this stuff, but I've got this 24 port switch. I don't want to buy a new one. Wire up 60 drops, wire it to the patch panel and then patch in the stuff that you really need. And then uh, you can bring other things online as you get more networking gear, get another switch, how, whatever you want to do. So um, I think that's about all I got for you. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next video.